The road to the 2001 Rose Bowl began with the hiring of Joe Tiller as Purdue's 33rd head football coach in November of 1996. We're here to win a championship. We've won them in the past and we will win them again in the future. In his first year, Joe Tiller earned Big Ten and National Coach of the Year honors, leading Purdue to its first winning season and bowl appearance in 13 years. We knew what type of a system we were going to utilize. We had tremendous confidence in the system. You know, timing in life is everything, and the timing was good, but, uh, but the fact that we had a tremendous amount of confidence in our system and our style of play, I think, uh, really provided us with an edge certainly over the other new coaching staffs that came in the league because as you'll recall there were four new coaches in the Big Ten that season. In 1998 Purdue recorded a second straight winning season and another Alamo Bowl victory this time in dramatic fashion over fourth ranked Kansas State. There's a difference between having a good team and having a good program. Uh, schools or programs from time to time will have that one good season, but then they'll, they'll do a little backsliding. And of course, our goal is not to do any backsliding, but to continue to improve on, on uh, what we've been able to get done today. In 1999, the Purdue football team reached the next level, picking up a third straight winning season and a trip to the Outback Bowl on New Year's Day 2000. Boilermaker players, coaches, and fans eagerly anticipated the championship season Coach Tiller had promised. Everyone should know us by now. We think we can win them all, you know. So we felt for a combination of two things, the preparation on our team's part, plus our schedule, based on who we were playing at home and who we were on the road against, that uh, we had a chance this year to win it all. A most amazing month of football began when the sixth-ranked Michigan Wolverines visited ross Ade Stadium to do battle with the Boilermaker squad that needed a victory to stay in the Big Ten race. The first half was all Wolverines as Michigan had the Boilermakers reeling on defense. Quarterback Drew Henson and company amassed a whopping 351 total yards on offense. I believe it's a conference thing. and Our guys were, you know, didn't know if they belonged in the same field as Michigan. You know, they, they came off at halftime, you know, hey, they're embarrassing ourselves. And, and to give Michigan credit, they executed very well. They executed perfectly in the first half, and we didn't. Breeze, who had finished 32 of 44 on the day, directed the Boilermakers to 311 second half yards. The 530 yards that Purdue totaled for the game were the most ever allowed by a Michigan team. Purdue's first drive covered 75 yards and featured this 29-yard run by Montrell Lowe to the Michigan 30. This end-around play for 10 yards by the speedy Vinny Sutherland got the ball down to the 6-yard line. From there, the Boilermakers played power football, first on this hard-hitting play to the Michigan 1, and then the well-earned touchdown on this diving run. On Purdue's next drive, Breeze broke Mark Herman's record for career passing yards on this pass to John Standiford. But even more important on the drive was the touchdown that followed as Lowe ran it in from 16 yards out on this strong run up the middle. With time running down in the fourth quarter, Breeze had the Boilermakers on the move again. His seven-yard run, followed by a late hit penalty against Michigan, moved the ball to the Wolverine 34. He then found tight end Tim Stratton for 13 more yards to the Michigan 17. To cap off the drive, Breeze hooked up with Standiford on a 10-yard pass to bring the Boilermakers within two at 31-29.
Purdue went for the two-point conversion, but Tim Stratton slipped in the end zone and was unable to make the tying catch. The Boilermaker defense, however, rose to the occasion and forced the Wolverines into a three and out. Purdue took over on its own 41-yard line with 1.41 remaining and no timeouts. The first miracle of October was about to unfold. Breeze first ran for 11 to the Michigan 49. Then the Breeze to Sutherland connection hooked up twice. The final being this 10-yarder to the Michigan 21. The shaken Wolverines contributed to their own demise when they had too many men on the field, moving the ball to the 16-yard line. Illegal substitution on a defense. Player to get off the field in time. Dorsch was presented with a second chance, and he made the most of it. This will be a 33-yard attempt. Tim Stratton to snap, and Ben Smith to hold, and Travis Dorch hopefully to put it through the upright. Here's the snap, the placement, and the boot. It is up! It is good! It's good! It's good! It's good! Four seconds to go! Travis Dorch has the monkey off his back. Purdue leads Michigan 32-31. It was to be sweet redemption for Dorsch as his 33-yarder with four seconds remaining sealed the improbable comeback victory. The Boilermakers and the Ohio State Buckeyes hooked up in an unforgettable contest in Ross State Stadium for what was to become the key match in deciding the Big Ten Championship. Aiken Adell led a determined team effort on defense as he notched eight tackles, including three for loss, two sacks, two pass deflections, and this interception of Ohio State quarterback Steve Belisari at the Buckeye 45. Then came one of the most dramatic quarters of football in Purdue history. Breeze went to work, hitting John Standiford for 32 yards to the Ohio State 41. Seth Morales, who would also finish the day with over 100 yards receiving, kept the drive alive with his 16-yard completion on third and 10 to the Buckeye 9. Breeze got the first of his three touchdown passes when he scrambled to find Standiford in the end zone for the final five yards. Breeze then marched the Boilermakers another 90 yards down the field to take the lead. On the way, he hit Tim Stratton for 14 and 9 yards, both on third and five plays, to keep the drive alive. Stratton finished the day with an even 100 yards receiving on a career-high 12 catches. This feat marked only the second time in Purdue history that three receivers would reach the century mark.